What will happen after the ISS retires? NASA has made several plans to prepare for that future, with commercial space stations being a key focus. However, one of their most anticipated projects, the Axiom Space Station, is now facing significant challenges due to issues with its contractor Axiom Space. These complications could jeopardize NASA's entire plan. So what exactly went wrong? Can SpaceX step in and become NASA's savior once again? Let's find out in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Earlier this year, progress on HAB-1, the first module of the Axiom Space Station, revealed significant advancements. Axiom Space and their partner Thales Alenia Space reported that they were nearly finished with the pressure vessel, module shell, and hatches. Other subsystems were also under development, and Axiom Space was confident that the module would launch on time in 2026. When the company was founded in 2016, they initially planned to launch the first module in 2020, but that timeline was pushed back to 2024 and then 2025 with the latest target set for the end of 2026. After HAB-1's launch in 2026, three additional modules are scheduled to follow in subsequent years with the aim of separating from the International Space Station before its retirement, which is to be anticipated around 2031. However, this timeline could be accelerated as Russia is looking to end its operations by 2028, increasing the urgency for Axiom. As deadlines loom, Axiom Space is now grappling with major cash flow issues as revealed by former employees. One primary reason for this financial strain is the management of the $140 million awarded by NASA. Axiom spent $117.4 million of that on Thales Alenia Space to develop the first two modules. This leaves the company with little funding left to navigate upcoming challenges. When the contract was signed, the two parties had still been planning to launch in 2024 and 2025, but delays have resulted in increased losses and pressure on resources. Another contributing factor to Axiom's financial struggles has been the aggressive hiring strategy the company adopted. By the end of 2022, Axiom had employed up to 800 staff members to develop its systems, incurring a massive payroll of around $10 million per month. Unfortunately, the results achieved from this investment have not been proportional to the expenses. Additionally, Axiom Space received a contract worth $228 million in 2022 for the Axiom spacesuit intended for use in Artemis III. However, to fulfill this contract, Axiom had to transfer personnel from the space station project, further slowing down the progress of building the space station module. As financial problems mounted, Axiom Space faced the difficult decision to cut salaries and lay off staff, including key personnel like co-founder Michael Sufredini. These internal issues have been exacerbated by delays in payments to partners, including a staggering $670 million owed to SpaceX. This amount covers costs for four Axiom missions designed to send astronauts to the ISS for research and training purposes related to operating the space station in the future. To address these financial woes, Axiom Space has sought to raise capital by targeting wealthy individuals, even selling slots for aspiring astronauts at Axiom. However, this approach has not yielded a significant interest, leading to only limited success in fundraising. All of these challenges have culminated in the inability to produce space station modules on schedule, making it increasingly difficult to complete construction before the ISS's retirement. In light of these issues, Axiom Space has been forced to consider a significant reduction in project scope, planning to downsize from four modules to just two. The original design for the Axiom Space Station included HAB-1 and HAB-2 as service modules, accommodating a total of eight astronauts, four per module alongside a research and manufacturing facility module dedicated to research and a power module equipped with solar panels for energy supply. With the new plan, Axiom Space can still establish an operational station with one service module and one power module, ensuring that the station can be completed before the ISS retires. However, this reduction means the number of crew members on board would be halved, and the research and manufacturing facility module will not be launched. This is undoubtedly a significant disappointment for both NASA and Axiom Space given the ambitious original expectations. Beyond the challenges facing Axiom Space, other commercial space station projects backed by NASA are also struggling. The Orbital Reef project is encountering difficulties due to conflicts between Blue Origin and Sierra Space. The progress of the two companies has diverged significantly, with Sierra Space making substantial advancements with its inflatable module system, while Blue Origin's core module has not progressed as expected. 
This stagnation is largely due to Blue Origin's focus on the new Glenn rocket, which is not slated for launch until at least November this year. Meanwhile, the Starlab project, led by Voyager Space, also appears to be lacking positive developments, raising further concerns about the feasibility of NASA's commercial space station plans. The most promising initiative currently is the Vast Space Station, which operates outside NASA's commercial space station program and is expected to launch next year. This situation highlights the irony of NASA's predicament as their vision for a robust commercial space station system is faltering. What do you think about the challenges facing the Axiom Space Station? Should NASA reconsider this ineffective project? Reply yes or no in the comments section. Please also like, share the video, and subscribe to our channel to stay up to date on SpaceX's development journey. Whatever NASA decides, it's clear that they will need assistance from SpaceX. Axiom Space continues to rely on SpaceX as the vehicle for maintaining crewed missions, and to date, three Axiom missions have been conducted successfully, showcasing SpaceX's reliability and operational expertise. As we look ahead, SpaceX's role will remain crucial for both Axiom Space and NASA. The upcoming fourth and fifth Axiom missions scheduled for next year will still be launched by SpaceX, reinforcing their partnership. Currently, Axiom Space has not announced a launch partner for the station modules, but it seems likely that only SpaceX, with its Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy rockets, possesses the speed and reliability necessary to support them in this critical phase. Once construction is complete, maintaining the station's operations, such as crew and cargo resupply, will be vital. Given SpaceX's extensive experience in resupplying the ISS, they appear to be the best choice for this task, ensuring that the Axiom space station remains operational and fully functional. Another exciting potential support for the Axiom space station comes from SpaceX's Starlink system. This year, the vast space station was revealed to be integrating Starlink, a move that could greatly enhance communication capabilities. Starlink's efficiency has been proven both on the ground and in space, particularly during the recent Polaris Dawn mission. By incorporating this satellite internet system, the Axiom space station could significantly improve its operational efficiency, even if its initial structure doesn't match earlier expectations. While uncertainties remain regarding the station's launch timeline due to recent issues, SpaceX's influence on the Axiom space station is unmistakable. Furthermore, SpaceX's role extends to NASA's other initiatives. In addition to the Axiom Space Station, SpaceX has been selected to launch Starlab, led by Voyager Space. Although the status of Starlab remains unclear, if it becomes operational, it will heavily depend on SpaceX's capabilities to ensure successful missions. We also need to consider Orbital Reef, another ambitious commercial space station project. If Sierra Space decides to withdraw from this initiative, they will require a reliable launch vehicle. While the company has mentioned a potential acquisition of ULA, the timeline for this acquisition remains uncertain. Until that is resolved, SpaceX stands out as the most viable option for support. The combination of Sierra Space and SpaceX could create a powerful partnership. The inflatable module concept deserves a more dynamic execution than what Orbital Reef currently offers, and SpaceX's resources could help realize that vision. Additionally, SpaceX is set to launch the vast space station next year. Although it isn't part of NASA's official program, its successful launch could capture NASA's interest, potentially leading to collaboration or partnership opportunities in the future. Moreover, SpaceX has proposed transforming its massive Starship into a space station. This innovative idea could streamline many processes, reduce costs, and enhance operational efficiency. By leveraging the Starship's capabilities, SpaceX could potentially create a self-sustaining habitat in space, addressing several logistical challenges associated with traditional space station designs. If SpaceX can realize this concept before the ISS retires, it could become a vital asset for NASA in maintaining its presence in low Earth orbit and beyond, ensuring that human exploration and research in space continue uninterrupted. Overall, SpaceX's ongoing developments and potential contributions position it as a central player in the future of space exploration, not just for Axiom Space, but for NASA and the broader commercial space landscape. In conclusion, we might once again witness SpaceX stepping in to save NASA from a difficult situation. The projects NASA has launched have faced significant challenges, especially with the current troubles surrounding the Axiom space station. Issues like loose coordination and inadequate contractor capabilities pose real threats to NASA's future presence in space. Given these circumstances, it's likely that NASA will turn to SpaceX for assistance, just as they have in the past. 
While it's hard to predict how many commercial space stations will emerge in the coming years, I believe that any endeavor to succeed the ISS will greatly depend on SpaceX's contributions. This situation raises a common question. Why is SpaceX so dominant in the aerospace industry? And this, my friends, is one of the key answers. Well, folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.